Jason. Yes. You are a character art director. I am. Sounds like a dream job. It is. <laughs> Can you explain a little bit what is your job and what do you do? Well, I, uh, my job entails, I work with a, I have a small crew of artists and we, uh, we collaborate and pre-visualize what the characters are going to look like before they are then built, 3D modeled, rigged, articulated, and animated in the computer. Um, so, and at that point, I stay on and those artists move on to other things, but I work with the animation and character modeling departments as they build the, these puppets that the animators get to use. You obviously just worked on Finding Dory. Do mm -hmm. you get to pick the projects that you work on at Pixar, or do you get picked? Well, it depends, right? You, uh, it depends on who is asking for you. So it's really, it's up to the directors who they want to work on their films, and if you have a good relationship with a lot of directors, then you have a lot of choices. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the characters in Finding Dory, Hank, mm -hmm. the octopus, you said it was the hardest character you've ever worked on and yeah. perhaps the most complex character that you guys have worked on so I, far I, at Pixar. I'd say so. Can you explain a little bit what are the complexities of a character like Hank? <clears throat> well, this is going to sound silly, but the very first time it occurred to me it was when I was sitting there drawing and I you draw one tentacle and you get it looking nice and organized and you went to tentacle number three and that looks good and then on to four and you're like, oh my god, four more to go. And then I thought to myself, oh man, the animators are gonna be screwed when they have to actually move all these things. I mean it's it's time consuming to organize them in a single frame drawing. So right right away I thought to myself, oh this is gonna be really, really hard. Um, but you add on to that just the complexities of rigging a model that can shape shift like that, that can go like a puddle and, and can go back into a form and stretch really narrow and thin, and then the color changing stuff. Um, that's just a lot of technical hoops to jump through. Um, it's not that we can't, a computer can make something do anything, right? We, you can, it's doing it in a fashion that is controllable by an animator that's hard, right? It's not like you, I mean, you could, could hand model all those different positions easily, but creating a puppet that is manageable to an animator is the tricky part. Yeah, and from what I've heard today here at Pixar, it sounds like a lot of research went into just this one character. Yeah. Um, to the point that you guys actually went to see actual octopi and yeah. how they moved and stuff. Can you, is there one particular experience research-wise that um, was particularly revealing for your process? Well, for me, I, as soon as I encountered there and found out about the mimic octopus and what they were capable of doing, that was really my big, like, aha moment, you know? Yeah. That's what I really got inspired by. But, um, you know, also just the tactile experience of going to Monterey Bay Aquarium and seeing, seeing them in real life and having it, like, look, you know, back at you and you just kind of, there's a, there's a sentient being in there um, was just an incredible experience. Well, I was too chicken to hold the octopus, but <laughs> I get you. Yeah. I mean, the octopus they have at Monterey Bay Aquarium is 80 pounds. I mean, it's like this big. So, like, you know, what um, Michael Stalker was talking about, like holding it. That that's a brave a brave thing to do. This thing, little giant thing wrapped around you. You know. Are they cold? The water was, you know, not freezing. Yeah. Just room temperature. Yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously the character design is influenced by the casting of mm -hmm. the character. Yeah. Um, how does, you know, how does knowing who's going to play the character shape what the character design will look like? Well, for what I do, not, it depends, like, because I'm so early on in the process, sometimes there might even just be a premise for the film. Um, I've also been on films where it's far enough along that they actually have voice recordings that I'll listen to it while I'm drawing, trying to like infuse some of that into the, to the design. But I think mostly it comes into play for the animation department because they they will record the voice actors, video record them while they're delivering the lines. So when they're making mouth shapes later, you might in order to make it look like acoustically the lips could make that sound. Sometimes they'll look at how the actor's mouth actually formed those those forms of their lips, you know, so sometimes that directly influences, but we almost never try to like really like make it look like a, 
a caricature of the human being. Like we don't actually copy. We're not trying to get a likeness to that person, but we might pick up on some of the, the cues of their lip movements and things like that. And there's <clears throat> obviously such an incredible variety of fish and animals in yeah. this movie. Do you get to design each of them, or you just like get into the main cast? Well, usually we divvy it up pretty evenly amongst all the different artists. Um, on this one, uh, because the story was in flux at one point, we actually went down to a, a skeleton crew for a long period of time. So I ended up working on a lot of the characters in the cast. Um, and you're right that it's incredible how many different species of, like when I first got in the film, I'm like, oh, draw fish again. I think I drew, drew much, almost more other species than I did fish on this film, I'd say. So. Um, it's there, like, you get to spend so much time drawing these characters and with these, invested in these character stories. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever find yourself, like, getting attached particularly to one of them? And did you get, besides Hank, that you spent obviously a lot of time on on mm -hmm. this one, uh, even in other movies you worked on, Pixar movies, um, do you develop a special relationships with the characters that you develop? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely ones that, like, stand out and that are my favorites. Um, I'm very partial to Ratatouille. Um, that was like a big, that was the first time I ever took on this role on a film and it was, you know, a little bit of a struggle. There's some bumps in the road for me during the production. And so, and I think it came out, so I'm very proud of the way it all came out. So like, that one really sticks out in my mind as one of my favorites. And weirdly from the first Nemo, I did the seagull on the first Nemo. Which, funnily, the reason I got that character is because I was, you know, like a, I was just a sketch artist, and it was sort of a get. Usually, the main characters are taken by the more experienced people, and I wasn't a more experienced person, so I got this minor joke character, but it turned out to be who knew who would have guessed that that seagull would be one of the most memorable characters in the film? It's just kind of complete coincidence, and you know, so I, I kind of love it for that reason. Yeah, and. Um I feel like from the outside, it, it feels like, you know, anybody who's into drawing would love to do what you do. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about um, how you ended up having this role and how you ended up working here at Pixar and doing what you love? Sure. For a living? Um, well, first, let me just say, I, I've often said, I draw for fun. I get paid to go to meetings, and there's a lot of meetings in my job. <laughs> um, that's really the work part. Uh, but I ended up, well, I went to school. I've always wanted to be an artist. Um, I went to university and then I went to art school after that and I was a freelance illustrator. And um, my student loans payments came around and I suddenly found myself starving to death. And so I weirdly had a friend that was working on the first Toy Story here and they called my house knowing that one of my roommates would, or me would want a job helping to move furniture around. Um, so my first job at Pixar was helping to move furniture for office moves and uh, you have to understand this was so long ago that I didn't even understand how computer graphics, no one really understood computer graphics yet, nor did I understand that there was a job for someone like me in a computer company, but while I was earning my hundred dollars a day, which I desperately needed, I saw production artwork like what I do now and I thought, oh man, I could do that. And so. Eventually, I kept doing a good job, and I got a job as a PA, and then I showed my portfolio and got a job in the art department. I started working on the first Monsters. Monsters Incorporated is the first film I worked on as an artist. And then it's just been a slow growth over 18 years since then. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice for someone who would like to get started in this industry? <clears throat> my advice would be to just, one, it's okay, let yourself fail. Like, like even now, as a professional artist, I do a hundred bad drawings before I get one that I think is good, you know, like, so like creating a space mentally to let yourself get through that stuff is really important. And secondly, I would say, you know, it's not just about drawing. We're make, the drawings are just a means to an end. We're making a film here. So the more you think about, you know, you're not just doing a drawing to make a pretty drawing, you're drawing something that's going to be built. You know, like, you think about what set would we need to tell this story? Where would the camera go? Like, how would we stage the action? Um, those, that's that kind of information that maybe isn't so 
obvious but is really useful in, when it comes to actually drawing for filmmaking. Yeah, man. Well, thank you so much yeah, and congratulations sure. on a beautiful movie. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank nice you. to meet you.